couple of years ago when Disney took over Lucasfilm and we found out that we were going to get a Star Wars 7, everybody who was a Star Wars nerd, I mean, I'm talking about people who not only love the movies, but love things uh, that were put into canon, some of them that happened before the events of the original trilogy, some of them that happened after the events, some happened thousands of years before, you know, they had lots of different time periods and lots of different things going on. Well, Disney came out and said, okay, those aren't canon anymore. The only thing that's canon are the numbered movies, Star Wars, The Clone Wars, uh, the TV show, and now Star Wars Rebels. So we lost a lot of really cool characters. We lost a lot of cool things that were going to happen. One of those ca cool characters was Grand Admiral Thrawn. Now, this you might not know about him, but he played a lot into what happened after the original trilogy. He was supposed to be the guy who comes up and pretty much becomes a new emperor. He takes over the remnants of part of the Imperial forces and kind of is the new villain of the universe trying to restructure the empire and bring it back together. Um, so recently we had rumors that they were going to introduce him into season three of star Wars rebels. Now star Wars rebels is the animated CGI animated <laughs> show that is on Disney XD. It's actually a pretty fun show. Which if you're is a star Wars considered guy. canon. Apparently. And it is considered canon. And the first season, I believe they had somebody called the Inquisitor chasing these guys around. Then we had Darth Vader in season two. And now we might have Grand Admiral Thrawn chasing the the crew of, uh, I believe it's like the Ghost Face or Ghost Ship or something like that. Um, Ghost Face uh, around the, crew? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm talking about Def the name Jam of the ship. They, Star Wars? There's, no, no. There's a, sh there's a ship that they're on that they... It centers around a crew of okay. one ship, pretty much. Um, and they so should do that, see... by the way. Just an aside. Def Jam Vendetta Star Wars. Yeah. The, Def Jam. Future. Future <laughs> ideas. Just... Okay. Anyway. okay. We'll throw that out there later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the rumor is that they're going to be introducing him in there. And so that means they are introducing him into canon. And he will become a real thing again. Now, if you don't know much about Grand Admiral Thrawn, uh, don't worry, because there are plenty of us who are still fans of Star Wars that didn't know much about him. But he was really, he was featured in uh, a trilogy called the Thrawn Trilogy, huh? and it was a bunch of Star Wars books introduced in 1991. The first book, I believe, was called Heir to the Empire, where it kind of has him taking control of the remaining remnants of the Empire. Uh, he does some battles with Luke and Leia and Han Solo, I believe, as they're putting together their new Republic. So he's kind of the antagonist to them reestablishing order in the galaxy Big um, in the books. So it's pretty cool. Now, he is blue, which, you know, we don't have enough bad guys that are blue. We don't we just don't have enough blue characters in movies. I mean, come on. What about diversity? I know what about diversity? seriously, like there's there's one guy in Star Trek. That's sometimes yeah. blue. That's and he, just like he usually doesn't do anything. He has no lines. He just sits there. He's not even a regular member of the crew. So of any other crew. Messed up. So I, it's kind of messed up. So I'm going to let you know a little bit about Grand Admiral Thrawn's background. Now he is part of a race called the Chiss, which uh, lives out in the unexplored part of the galaxy. Which is weird because if they live there, they kind of explored it, but we won't get too far into that. Um, and one day, the back when the before Emperor Palpatine has taken power, he's sending out these secret missions to do things here and there. And one of them runs across the Chiss and Gre uh, Admiral Thrawn, who is now Commander Thrawn at this time because he's commanding some of the Chiss forces, discovers it and ends up like totally obliterating this force. And Instead of Palpatine getting mad, he's like, hey, who designed the plan to take out my guys? It's pretty genius. Let me meet this guy. So they meet. They don't really do much more than say, hey, I respect you. And, oh, okay, cool, thanks. Uh, hey, you want a job killing people? Oh, well, maybe not right now. I got to make sure I protect my home planet. And so that's kind of where things left. A little bit later, the Jedi Order sends something out there, too. And, he, again, he demolishes a whole bunch of Jedi. So he's shown his knack for uh, a military genius Um a couple times. So, but I as thought no one go, could kill a Jedi. Hmm? I thought no one could kill a Jedi except well, all except the people for, that kill all the Jedi. Which, yeah, there's a lot of Jedi that die. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so things happen where he is exiled from the Chiss. The Chiss have a non aggression thing going. Like, they don't want to be the aggressors in any conflict, but they'll pretty much finish it. And he's pretty aggressive. So they said, yeah, you don't fit what we're doing here. We're going to exile you. Well, he gets exiled to a planet, something happens, bing, bang, boom. 
he ends up in the service of the emperor and the emperor makes him the 13th of the grand admirals which there's only supposed to be 12 they kind of keep them secret they want to keep them in the background there's a big thing in the empire about having non-humans as part of the hierarchy and it's big no-no and so when the empire bre- when the emperor breaks his own rule it, it, it seems kind of weird so the empire are racist Species. yes the empire is racist yes yes they were um so 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 they bring him out and that's kind of where he starts blossoming under palpatine's tutelage and then we get him where we have have him now as the you know rises up takes over the remaining forces and kind of becomes that dark force in the galaxy again uh the first time i actually ever remember seeing um, Thrawn was actually in TIE Fighter. He does plans a couple missions for you. You help him stop a coup against the Emperor, I believe, at one point in the game. So there's um, some pretty cool things. It was always weird having the blue guy there. I always thought it was a shading thing, like he was just like in shadows, so they made him kind of a blue tint. But no, he's he's supposed to be blue. Mm. So I didn't quite understand that when I was, ooh, I must have been 8, 9, 10 years old playing that game. So yeah, long I remember time. that game being there and people playing it i don't remember being any good at it or playing it very much it's a while ago but yeah yeah tie fighter and so this is really cool for the movies because i think this adds gives them an opportunity to add one of the, the characters very very beloved by everybody in the star wars extended universe without going too crazy with the canon because i understood why they got rid of canon because they want to make their own story. They want this to be original. They don't want to have to just go off of books. So this is a good way of bringing someone in from those books, kind of giving, you know, uh, paying homage to those books, saying, yeah, this was a great, you know, these were great stories told about the Star Wars universe. We don't want to throw everything away. We want to take some of these ideas. And I'm thinking he probably fits pretty well into this universe. We don't know quite what's going to happen in Star Wars 8, uh, Star Wars 7 kind of left you not knowing what direction they were going to go. So I won't ruin anything, but you kind of see a little bit of a way forward, but you don't quite know everything, um, which is, you know, good movies, especially if you plan on making multiple installments. That's a good way to do it. So I, I ain't hating on that. Um, but this would be a cool way to put him in there because we already know that the First Order's out there. That's, uh, I believe, uh, Snoke's, the the main, the the hologram like giant guy who's like the new emperor is the guy running the first order kylo ren the dark jedi in uh, force awakens is part of the first order and it makes me think that okay if there's a first order then we also know there's a new republic rising up who you saw leia kind of have control of the new republic it, it would make sense that if the empire does splinter into so many different groups that there's probably a third or a fourth or maybe even a fifth group maybe not always bad but you know out there and this might be an interesting storytelling dynamic. Instead of making it just the good versus evil, it could be, you know, uh, the f- enemy of my enemy is my friend type situation where you could see them going a little darker, having to deal with this guy and then him turning into something worse or maybe him being the lesser of two evils. I don't know. There's just so many yeah. different storytelling. Uh, they could go with the complexity, like in the real world, where sometimes there are, especially historically, just war, you know, differing factions vying for power however they want to do it for with some with principles some with not you know just maybe there's not a lot of good guys even maybe there's one good guy maybe there's five bad guys maybe there's a couple good guys and 10 bad guys maybe there's a couple neutral guys you know who knows it's just you never know but i I kind of doubt they're gonna go too deep well Well, he's not gonna be good for sure yeah but again, he could be the lesser of two evils at some. It sounds certain. like he'd be more likely to be the greater. Evil, or you could Jedi. go with like just. Well, he doesn't just kill them. He's he. If they get in his way, he kills them. But yeah, so but there's just just a lot that they can do with this. Now, this is a rumor about what might happen in a TV show. So don't get me wrong. I understand we're jumping. <laughs> we're taking large jumps here. But I think they're justified large jumps, and I think they'd be really cool. But let me know what you guys think out there. Would you like to see Thrawn added to the numbered movies? Maybe have him have an appearance in either eight or nine. Or heck, we're having plenty of the anthology movies coming out. Maybe he's more of a character in some of these anthology movies than the numbered movies. I don't know. Let us know what you think. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter. 
Google Plus, Facebook, always good ways of getting a hold of us. But let's 